Ladies and gentlemen, dear faculty, dear Dean Martins, dear parents, relatives of those who are today in the center of our attention, deservedly so, dear soon-to-be graduates of the Master of Science in Environmental Technology and International Affairs. It's young. Let me start by saying it's good to see you. And we all know what this means. It's good to see you. We can be here together after almost two very difficult years. Normally, I would start the graduation ceremony with saying how difficult the ETSIA is, the two years at both institutions. This time I have to say how difficult life has been for all of us. And that means for you that you had even more challenges than many other people. You could expect two years of hopefully the best education that you can get, enjoying all the possibilities you have at the Diplomatic Academy and the Technical University of Vienna. It turned out to be different, but you managed. Here we are. Here we are, and I can see in your faces that uh, you enjoy that it's done now, and that you have succeeded in doing this in spite of having everything. And I think it's simply clear that we shall overcome. That's hopefully true for all of us. It is one of the great moments at the end of each academic year when I say my welcome to you, the students, who will only in a few moments become graduates. To say welcome to all of your families, all of your friends, uh, and some of them now online still on a live stream. It's an honor and a pleasure for me as director of the Diplomatic Academy to say this and to welcome you here at the Vienna School of International Studies. And somehow, I guess for you, it feels also a bit like a homecoming because your predecessors, they had their final graduation ceremony, not here, but at the, at the Technical University of Vienna. Due to the circumstances, today is also for you a proof that the Diplomatic Academy is a bit more open than the uh, state universities in Austria. Yesterday, we already had graduations of our DLG program and of our MICE program. DLG program, we graduated here in this hall with a wonderful atmosphere. And in the afternoon, we had the graduation in the ceremonial hall of the University of Vienna for, for the MICE program. It was totally different. It felt very ceremonial, but it felt different. You know why? Because there, we still had regulation which demanded strong distancing. Everybody had to wear a face mask. Everybody. Here we sit. I can't see a face mask. We are, it's possible to do something. And it is part of the story of the Diplomatic Academy. We've always been a small family which knows how to respond to situations, sometimes difficult situations, hopefully most of the time situations where you enjoy the community of so many different people coming from so many different countries, different backgrounds, different ideas of what you want to do in the future. And you are, in this case, in this regard, no exception. Uh, you are the 30th Etizianos class of 2021. <laughs> a group of altogether 
16 people. I'm not sure why, why you, some of you are laughing already. <laughs> we come to that a bit later. Uh, 16 people from eight countries and three continents. Uh, you studied and you have a background of various, various fields. But what combines you is your interest in what's possible in this world to combine the Austrians among you might understand when I say the best of two worlds. A few months after you started, uh, a new Austrian government was formed between a conservative party and a green party. And the first statements of, of the prime minister and the deputy prime minister was, we combine the best of two worlds. So something that is oriented towards what's possible to stabilize the society and at the same time make sure that what's necessary to save the planet is possible. I'm not giving you any sort of response of what I feel, whether that's possible in the political world. But I know that that is exactly what it's here is about. Understand the political side of the world and try to work with environmental technologies, technologies uh, about innovation. I hope that you have experienced this as an asset that you perceived the situation as something which opens your horizons and your minds. Our thanks certainly go to our partners, to Professor Bob Martens, Dean of Academic Affairs, to Professor Adolf Stepan, ETSIA Program Committee, and founder of ETSIA together with Professor Gerhard Leubel from the Diplomatic Academy. Uh, and I also welcome the program manager, Magister Isabel Stalinger. She has been the good angel of this for quite some time. And I thank also our sponsors, Stipendienstiftung uh, der Republik Österreich, the Association for Advancement in Teaching, uh, our press partner, Die Presse, uh, and certainly also ARA. And I welcome also Honorary Professor Dr. Christoph Scharf, the CEO of ARA. Stoff recycling. And I thank all of you who supported our graduates, the family and the relatives and the friends. It's often said that we live in interesting times, but I'm not going to speak about COVID-19. You've heard it all. You know that we have to overcome things like that. And uh, you know how challenging this was. Zoom and gloom, I said yesterday, zoom and gloom. As today I would say zoom and survive. We all had to live through this transition to online teaching and not seeing your professors, which sometimes may be nice, but sometimes not so nice. It's, it depends. Um, but all of them, all of our faculty tried to make those efforts and deliver the possibly best teaching that we can offer. We are aware of the fact that your class experienced two of the most difficult years of the academy ever. Um, also because of the lack of the usually vibrant atmosphere here in this house. I'm not only talking about the bar on the first floor. <laughs> but I mean, the meeting in the hallways, the studying together, the celebrating together, the traveling together, in short, living together. We want to thank you for cooperation in these difficult times, your course speakers, the volunteers, the people who are active in the COVID working committee, advising and cooperating with us on many occasions, uh, with uh, not always having easy and fast answers, but that's what we together had to learn. Disruptions happen. <laughs> and you are the best students to understand what that means, also in the field of your own work and studies. I think in this situation, we, we were also able to learn important skills. We didn't want to do this. It's not an, it was not our intention 
to know suddenly where Wuhan exactly lies in China. But that's happened. And these sort of things will happen in your life, I, I'm, I'm sure, all over again, whatever it is. You have to cope with unexpected and difficult situations. And you don't only have to respond as a student. You also have to respond as a person who demands emotional intelligence, what to do with all these anxieties, fears, not knowing what, what happens to your relatives somewhere in the world, to your friends. Uh, you have to adapt to new circumstances. I'm proud of you, what you have achieved, that you have adapted, and I'm happy that we can be here to celebrate your graduation. But you did not only study hard, you were also active in the uh, DASI uh, Diplomatic Academy Student Initiative with, uh, in a number of societies. You practiced diplomacy during the DASI Conference 2020 and 21 about the uh, climate crisis in 2020, I remember very well, with the opening of the federal president, Alexander Van der Bellen. In the talk before we started this conference, uh, I had a short meeting with the president and I said, well, today it's very good that we speak about climate change. And he said, looks at me, and he said, no, no, we're talking about climate crisis. Um, maybe I learned something from this as well. And you also were able to uh, participate in the magazine polemics with your articles, you were active in 20 comedies and societies, and I want to thank Dasi for all the dialogue and communication. I think this has surely been a key element of surviving together these times. And of course, the COVID-19 situation caused some collateral damage above all the study trips and the DA ball and the Summerfest, which should have taken place actually today. So you're invited next year and following years and the following years because this is a place where traditions are upheld as much as possible. The most exciting, and I never thought it would happen, the most exciting study trip this year led us to the main hall of the foreign ministry to get vaccinated. <laughs> Could you ever have imagined that when you started two years ago? But there were also moments of immense joy. And here I have to look at Tiziano Alessandri. <laughs> there is he, there is he, there he is, who became father during the first exam week. <laughs> and to his family. So the reason why you named your course, Etizianos, is sitting here today. <laughs> and not only him. It was heartwarming when I heard that you wanted to give a sign that life is a miracle and that there is always hope and positive things happen even during demanding times. And, but now it's time for you to think about the future. It's very nice to have a commencement ceremony. And I like the American expression because it tells us that it's not the ending, but it's also the beginning of something. And you have to look on the job market for the best perspectives. I am convinced the time is in your favor. Unfortunately, partly, because of the situation all around us, as far as the planet Earth is concerned. You are generalists in the best sense of the world. You have an immense knowledge in different disciplines. You should and you will be sought after your knowledge, but certainly also, hopefully, your emotional intelligence. You understand, after these two years, political and economic implications, the legal basis and the historic conditions of developments, and you have professional expertise in aspects of environmental technology. Please continue to move in and between the disciplines, analyze developments from different angles. 
And I hope you have also made good use of our DA career link services, the seminars and workshops, which should be helpful uh, to continue uh, your career path. From previous graduates, the majority are working at around 50% in private business. Uh, and I like that. But at the same time, I have to say, for governance reasons, also our public administrations need the sort of knowledge and the sort of experience uh, you have made and your homologues colleagues have made. Part of your predecessors worked in, in, in also in international organizations and also in public service. As you know, the Diplomatic Academy can look back on a long history, almost 270 years. But in these 200 and almost 70 years, I think the best invention we ever made was the introduction of the ITSIA program. So thank you to the founders again, I have to say. This is a, a real program which already in its conception is innovative. And that's why I'm very thankful to the Technical University of Vienna that we can do this together. You are now part of these almost 227 years. Some of you will also receive the DA diploma today. And I hope that you stay part of the, of the community of the Diplomatic Academy, uh, which is a in, truly international community. Please join the Club DA and use the opportunities. We have a network of alumni in more than 120 countries. Please carry on as enthusiastically as I and my colleagues know you when you started your studies here. Preserve this fire, which is important, uh, and help us to make good, good use of our environment, our planet. You know, when I think of the ETSIA program, I always have an image in my, on my mind. And this is, I shouldn't maybe tell you this, but there it is. I have the image of Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator <laughs> on my mind. That's Asia somehow for me. Uh, not that it's as funny all the time, but in The Great Dictator, this guy dances in a very central scene on his larger-than-life desk, balancing in a very absurd way an inflatable globe over his head. And that's the situation. On the one hand, it's the planet. We have to do something, hopefully using the best of environmental technology possible to survive. And on the other hand, we have huge political problems. Not that there is a great dictator around. Also yesterday, sorry to say so, Xi Jinping said he don't want China to be bullied around. Nobody wants to be bullied around. But the geopolitical situation is about bullying at the moment. So we have this sort of situation of Charlie Chaplin dancing on a larger than life desk, and we have this problem of what to do with, with this, this inflatable, which is not really inflatable, globe over our head. So sorry to say this is the picture, <laughs> the image I, I, I give you at the end of my of my, of my speech here. Enjoy the ceremony. You will leave here as TA and TU alumni, and I wish you all the best for your future. Thank you. Ambassador Briggs, distinguished faculty and academic uh, directors, parents, alumni, friends and members of the class 2019-2001, also from my side, a very good morning. Yes, indeed, Ambassador Briggs, you're, you're, you're leveling up to a very high benchmark here in, in delivering um, 
a speech, and actually, I also had an image in my mind from Charlie Chaplin, modern times, where he's pulling the screws and, and the machines are going on and going on. But it's nice to have an image in, uh, in your mind which you can communicate. Indeed, ETIA, or some people tend to say ETIA, uh, is a brand. A brand uh, constructed by two institutions which have been around for a very, very long time. And to a certain degree, very, very complementary in terms of numbers of students, fields of study, and that's what it makes very interesting. As far as I can see, and I've been for some time around, but uh, Austrian universities have been very close, so to say, here's my garden, here's your garden. Uh, if you don't come into my garden, I, I will not touch in your garden, and, and we, we, we keep life as, uh, as stable and simple as it is. In case two uh, institutions are working together, it's, it's a bit like, uh, well, that's maybe the other uh, image, a marriage. A marriage starts, it's high life, there's the wedding, and then there, 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 there's getting, so to say, all day life around, there, there, there's, so to say, the, what you call in German, the, the verfliegste siebente jaar, the unfortunate seven years, but we are long around that. And I think we always make it to, to get together Yes, we, we, we had difficulties with the, the spaces, the numbers uh, were, uh, of capacity were going down, and even in our main celebration hall, we were only able and capable to, to get the academic directors, the ambassador and, and uh, program managers and, and the students, but not the family. But that's not a graduation. Uh, very important in a graduation is to be together with those who were supporting you, not only financially, but also uh, uh, morally and, and, and whatever support, because it, is a, it, it has been a hard work. It, it, this is, so to say, not, uh, not a field of study where, uh, where you just sit in the classroom, you, you do the one or the other assignment, and, and that's it. No, especially uh, in, in also in the second year, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure that everybody is uh, an aficionado of chemistry and physics and this kind of things, and you have to go through it. But you're, you're not, a, how do you call it, a standalone student uh, with many other anonymous students. This is a cohort, a group, and that is something which will uh, um, maintain over the, over the next coming years. Maybe not with all the group, and, and you will be spread all over the world, but I think there's a very good basis to, uh, uh, to exchange. And, and what we can see indeed is that our graduates from uh, this program are doing very, very well. This, this is, so to say, well, not, not, not a study program where you say, well, uh, okay, I did ETIA, but what, what, what's next on the agenda? People will, will stick to this. And, and there are indeed uh, uh, a number of uh, challenges. Um, the interesting thing is, and, and we do have a couple of collaborations with other institutions, we are always the oldest institution, uh, also in the third century, but uh, the Diplomatic Academy is even a bit more older, however, in the course of time it's the same like with siblings. Uh, in the very beginning, if you're young, the, the difference in age is, is huge, but in the, in the course of time, it doesn't matter actually uh, that, uh, that much. And what makes an uh, institution so unique? Well, you could say, is, is it the building, uh, the buildings, the celebration halls, are they uh, representative or not? Yes, maybe to a certain degree, the, let's call it the learning environment, but even more so important, it's the, the human resources, that is the students, uh, the faculty and the way in which they are delivering the, uh, the learning entities. And we were faced with quite some, some issues to get uh, fully used to, uh, to learning environments, uh, virtual learn, learning environments, to, to see also the, the drawbacks. It, it's so tempting to, uh, well, everybody has been locked in, uh, in in what I've seen in courses, but you are also, as a lecturer, not sure at all who is really attending in, 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 in the true sense of the, of the word. It, it's, 
in some cases, uh, you, you are watching black windows, black windows, black windows. There, 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 there's no feedback. Even people are not snoring and, 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 and so on. And you don't know, well, can they hear me? Can they? You see, so uh, you tend to ask questions, uh, maybe also at random, just to make sure uh, are they really uh, around. But, but I think in, in, in this case, your, your class has been very dedicated. You, you were not forced by your parents or by, by whoever to, to go to the course you wanted to do it yourself. And uh, I think in this regard, especially your, your, your generation is, uh, is, is facing an other labor and career market as maybe mines or from Ambassador Briggs. Uh, well, your parents would probably say, well, uh, go to, to, to a bank or to an insurance institute. Uh, that's, so to say, uh, the, the, the number one uh, forever. That, that, that holds not true nowadays. I, I think the, the, the labor market has become very volatile, but also not on the side of the laborers, but also on the side of the, uh, the companies. And that means that you are very much depending on, on, on a very good profile of, of education, uh, that along with, uh, uh, with working experience. And if there is then a network in the background, even so more uh, better. So um, what we can say about this cohort, uh, and, and that's not, uh, not, so to say, a novelty, is that ATIA or ATIA has been very clearly female dominated and uh, and not just uh, one cohort but, but but many many classes and I think the sooner or the later maybe a ministry of, of, of family affairs would be willing to come here and to say this is the the role model we we are delivering the average age is below 30 that's not always the case in continued education where we have a wider span um, we are also not having people who were, were born and raised here, it, it is, it's roughly half of your cohort, but one could say this is a truly uh, international uh, orientation. Four out of ten passed with distinction, and especially for those four, the, the tension will, will grow and grow in the course of this graduation because there is this uh, famous ARA award in the background, thanks to a long-standing uh, uh, collaboration and um, so there, there is more uh, to come. So all in all, I, I, I think uh, we, we can be more than happy to, to have this graduation here um, um, today and in a week from now there, there will be hopefully very good news because uh, a long time there were certain let's say, debates and uncertainties in, uh, will my graduate uh, certificate be accepted for, for doctorate studies uh, or not? And uh, again, here the situation at Austrian universities is, is, is very uh, diverse. Some universities say, yes, we, we will check your documents and see if your preceding studies are eligible or not. Other ones uh, did not, but uh, I'm... I'm, I'm after the information from Ambassador Briggs, I'm more than confident that there will be a, a stable and, and, and solid uh, solution. We also have to see that uh, quite, a, uh, quite a few predecessors from you did uh, perform uh, successful uh, PhD studies um, um, abroad. A degree is a, is a precious thing and it is also satisfying to work hard uh, for it. But um, without any doubt, you were most likely not able to be without the support of your fellow mates in the class, your uh, family members and, and partners. And this is, so to say, really the argument why we are getting together here today. I would also like to thank the, the both academic uh, uh, directors and, and the founding members uh, who, who have been around. and. It, the ETA program has a very, very strong uh, faculty with an uh, incredible amount of, of dedication, and, and that uh, I think that, that that also leads to a very uh, strong uh, result in the end. I would like to thank for your attention and also uh, thank our newly appointed uh, program assistant, Katharina Neumann, 
uh, who made it to, to get in touch with this program so, so fast. So with that, uh, thank you so much and very soon the documents will be handed over to you. All the best. Dear all, and in particular, dear students, this is an important day for you. It is your graduation day, and you will receive your certificate in a few moments. You have done very well in the last two years, in the first year here at the Diplomatic Academy, in the second year at the Technical University. But what made your, these two years special, not only for you, but also for the faculty. That were the very special circumstances, the pandemic which interfered in what we all have known as a normal student's life. But you have shown flexibility. You have adjusted to these new challenges to work with Zoom lectures. You study at home and don't have the possibility to be around at the academic institutions. What you have dealt with in these two years are a number of different subjects, starting here at the Diplomatic Academy with uh, international relations, international economics, international law and history, and in the second year with, social, uh, with natural sciences and technology. Environmental issues as we are facing them are very broad. We all talk about climate crisis, climate change. But we should not forget there are many other issues which are also very challenging for humankind. That is biodiversity, loss of biodiversity. The ozone layer, yes, we're doing quite well currently, science tells us, in the protection of the ozone layer, but I'm sure there will be new challenges. Access to uh, drink, uh, drinking water, clean drinking water and sanitation waste management, green economy. These are all challenges we have to deal with. And this cannot be done at one level. What is important that these challenges are addressed, not only at the federal level of government, but also regional and local governments with the involvement with civil society, industry, and business. Only if we have this cooperation, then the goal of a human environment and sustainable development can be achieved. But for this, we need a common understanding. 
on all levels of society, we need the understanding where the challenges are, but we also have to know where the solutions are and what these solutions might be also risky in, by using certain technologies. You are well prepared for dealing in these various disciplines and I'm sure that you will make a big contribution, an important contribution to facing these challenges in the future. Uh, let me just have one remark at the end. Some of you have done not only all the necessary exams and uh, seminar papers and so on to achieve the Master of Science certificate. Some of you have also earned, in addition to your Master of Science, the Diploma of the Diplomatic Academy. Congratulations and all the best for your future. Everybody, uh, Hans Buxbaum uh, sent me a message for you. He called it applause to the class, <clears throat> and I will read it to you. Due to a long planned class veterans meeting, which was on my dinner month, scheduled for July 2nd, so that I would have been able to present the graduation ceremony on July 1st, I regret to be unable to attend your ceremony. I must admit, Zoom procedures was interesting, but the personal responses, discussions, requests could not happen as, a, as in a direct uh, tuition. I want in particular thank you for you, the class, the class speakers, for their patience and understanding with the teaching staff, and I want to add that our staff will give those not completely finished right now information and support for finalizing uh, their studies. I will be available for requests and references most time in the summer, and I graduate. Uh, and I congratulate you for your progress having finished our course or near finished. My best and sincerest regards to you and your families and many thanks for choosing our course. Hans Buxbaum. There's nothing to say. <laughs> yes, yes, I think there is something to, to, to say. What I would like to mention and <laughs> Ambassador has already mentioned it. Uh, we, it's a joint program uh, which was uh, invented actually by the university, uh, by, by the diplomatic academy, when uh, Werner Neudeck, who should be here, and Gerhard Leubel approached me <coughs> and Hans Buxbaum and asked if we can teach some technology to diplomats. Uh, it was immediately clear that if we also would benefit of it if our faculties understand a bit more the world of, of uh, the diplomatic world, and we set up a program. I want to mention that at this time it was a Holocene, and now we have approached to the Anthropocene. How was it in Old Holocene? In Old Holocene, it was like in modern times. We were working hard. We had tremendous output on products and also on CO, CO2 and, and, and green gases. And uh, we had a plan A, plan A. You remember this, plan A? which uh, Al Gore came up with. You know who Al Gore is? Yeah, of course. And he said, there is only a plan A, we, we needn't have a plan B because we have only one world and not a world B. Yeah, so only a plan A. As we realize now, uh, we had to change gradually this plan A and the Anthropocene 
and also the people who are in demand to shape it changed. In the Holocene, it was mostly engineers, scientists, and so on, who said that we have to put this in the plan A and this in the plan A. And there were uh, prospects, uh, what happens if we uh, don't this, and so on. And gradually, gradually, and the politician, yeah, read the plan A, actually nobody have ever read the plan A, I, I know no book which is called Plana. And the politicians uh, did obey it or did not obey it, depending on pressing, pressing uh, political uh, pressures. Now what happens in the Anthropocene now, or what will happen in the Anthropocene? Our think tanks from the Holocene which were the old universities, technical universities all over the world, who uh, gave input to the plan R, uh, substituted gradually by think tanks. Yeah? And these think tanks are run by managers, pol politicians, who are trained in NLP and in uh, message control, and things like that. And I'm not sure if we will get along with it. So, something else had to be put in this plan A, and that would be migration, justice, gender justice, wars, for resources had to be uh, taken in account, inequality, and many other important parameters, yet not included in Plan B. I will stop here. It's now in your hand to think about it. What can you, how can you feed it to a Plan E? We has, how has to look it like. All the best, and now they are the graduates of the certificates. Thank you. We now call the graduates of the 13th ATIA. Abhari Maria Salua, Bulgaria. <laughs> Renewable energies in Scotland and energy storage possibilities, building a theoretical black box model in a close hybrid energy system. <laughs> Alessandri Tiziano, Austria, Italy. The feasibility of atmospheric water generations on small tropical islands, a case study on Korong Sanolem, Cambodia. <laughs> Bandera Sara, Austria. Land recycling in the European Union circular economy. Redevelopment of brownfields as a potential mitigation strategy to land consumption focusing on Austria and the region of Flanders in Belgium. <laughs> Constanze Ecke, Austria. The treatment of lead in the, in the accession to the EU in 2004 and 2007. <laughs> Fresine Anne Sophie, France. Nuclear technology, the thin line between weaponization and peaceful resources. Grazie.
Peter Hanna, Austria, Railway Infrastructure and its Environmental Effects in the Alps from 1945 until today. Zixian, Italy. <laughs> Kio Victoria, Malaysia. Ghanian African dark earths as an alternative to nitrogen based fertilizers. Fabian, Austria, water scarcity and water management, a comparative analysis of different water availability and demand assessments. <laughs> Messinger Nadia, Austria. Michelle Melanie Luxemburg. <laughs> Rasinger Maria Clara, Austria. Phosphorus management and recovery from sewage sludge and on an international scale. Potentials and limitations. Chestunov, Yegor, Ukraine. <laughs> Sina, Nick, Luxembourg. Jiang, China, a comparative analysis of rural electrification in policy, technology, and finance in the world. Ambassador Briggs, Dean Martins, members of the faculty, families and friends, and of course, um, dear graduates, now that you are graduates. Today is the culmination of an interesting, unusual, and challenging time. You succeeded, so on behalf of ARA, my sincere congratulations to all of you on your graduation. 
It's been a pleasure for ARA to be a sponsoring partner of the ETIA program for many years now. Thank you for your cooperation. It's an honor to be part of this program today, and it's my privilege to present to you the ARA Best Study awardees, the best students of your class. So who are the best students? Uh, I can't judge that, um, but we have an eminent jury. Thank you, Professors Leubel and Stepan and Neudeck and uh, Buchsbaum for your efforts, for your advice. You took a look at all your grades and your master thesis and you came up with an unanimous recommendations. recommendation. Um, quite unusual, we have a tie. So there will not, there will be a one single best study awardee or a runner-up or the third place. We have a tie of four of you. And the jury suggested that we split the prize in equal shares amongst the four of you. So that means that in a couple of seconds, you will get a nice certificate, uh, probably a photo for your family, your parents, and uh, an award of 5,000 euro for each of you uh, as a kind of kickstart in your new career. Um, that's all. So <laughs> that, that, that's the, the small print, so to say. So I'd like to introduce to you our 2021 Ara Best Study awardees. And uh, I'd like to begin with uh, Tiziano Alessandri. And congratulations on your fatherhood, of course. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can hardly beat that. I'd like to call Sandra Bandera. There's no specific order, just alphabetic order. Um, Victoria Kio. <laughs> and last but not least, Maria Rasinger. Dear Ambassador Briggs, dear Gesandte Kepler Schlesinger, Professor Martens, Professor Stepper, and Professor Leube, dear members of administration and faculty, dear distinguished guests, and most importantly, dear Etizianos. Fabian and I, we are honored to hold this speech on behalf of this class. However, we find it rather difficult to hold a valedictorian speech that is supposed to 
look back, say thank you and goodbye, when we only see all of you together in a room after almost one year. So we first want to say hello, it is beautiful to see all of you again today. We want to give a big congratulations to everyone, including ourselves, for being here today. The world we live in is plagued with dangers, populism, patriarchy, global warming, and love sickness. And despite all the odds, we still managed to graduate. So let's give us all a big round of applause. Throughout the last two years, our group has not only studied together. We have grown together, we have learned together, we have struggled together too. Most importantly, we have loved together. We have become a little family. We are 16 brilliant minds from eight different countries. And we've all accomplished these two colorful years of ETIA, and we can all be proud of that, I can say. ETIA has been a melting pot for like-minded people from different cultural as well as academic and professional backgrounds. Our group doesn't only consist of persons who aim to make the world a better place. No, each and every one of us is an expert in their field of interest. We are philosophers, Jäger. <laughs> we are physicians, <laughs> we have activists, we have engineers, we have economists, we have musicians, and we have artists. We even accompanied one of our colleagues to become a father. And who knows what would have happened if we had more tipsy first days. <laughs> <laughs> During our dinners, our online game nights, our picnics, study sessions, uni projects, classes, hikes and parties, we have all become friends. We remembered the first day at TDA. We were all super excited to be here and didn't know what to expect. Will this be like Hogwarts? Will I survive the two year? Am I international enough? All these concerns were gone after our legendary and liquid introduction week. The DA and the TU taught us knowledge in political science, economics, law, history, and natural science. For those of you who have gained language skills, we know the difficulties with der, die, oder das. Germans is sometimes even weird to us native speakers. And what's the difference between Prussia and Russia? And, and let's not start with French and how to count 97. We've heard it's something like 4 times 20 plus 10 plus 7, but I guess we never know. Fabian and I, we've been representing you and also the rest of the DA student body during the last two years as DASI, the Diplomatic Academy Student Initiative. Ever since we negotiated, we talked and we tried to fi find solutions with the administration to make the students' voices heard. This experience was especially challenging to us in addition to the demanding study course of ETIA. However, we appreciated and enjoyed this task a lot because we learned so much about how academia works and especially how crisis management in academia looks like. A big shout out to Jenny at this point who had the pleasure and the nurse to listen to our concerns every Wednesday at 11.30. <laughs> <laughs> but let us not forget that this program is about more than making friends and getting a well-paid job afterwards. It is about facing the world's biggest challenge, the climate crisis. It is about addressing the facts we have from science, about finding solutions and ways to mitigate the facts we have from science, about finding solutions and ways to mitigate global warming, about protecting our valuable ecosystems and nature as our home. It is about recognizing that nature is not only the home to us um, human species, but also to the home of millions of others. And also that there is no indefinite economic growth on a planet with and limited boundaries. But we, as privileged humans, who can afford living in Austria and even study here at the DA, we have the power to spread the knowledge that we have gained, raise awareness, and contribute to a sustainable development in all different aspects. In that regard, we're looking forward to see all of you bloom and shine and have a great impact in your awesome careers. So let's stay in touch so our children have good internships op opportunities. <laughs> Yeah, we should probably end this speech by thanking those that have accompanied us along the way and have tried to make the ETIA program a success story. Both faculties of the Technical University and the Diplomatic Academy have worked hard for us to arrive at this very day, our graduation. It is difficult to pinpoint those that have had the greatest impact, especially as these are different to every one of us. Therefore, as we speak for the whole class, we want to make it simple and thank everybody who is somehow involved to this program for their support and encouragement. In addition, we thank our families, our friends, our partners, our peers, and our allies for supporting us along the way and making this possible. And we especially appreciate that you listened to us when we cried, when we were close to breaking up the studies, 
when we were stressed, depressed, and not well enough dressed. <laughs> and last but not least, thank you, dear colleagues, for these two years together. Often on graduation day, we look outside for heroes, but we see them right here among us. So what should I say? Temperature is rising? So let's rise faster. Congratulations to the 13th class of ETIA. Um, and at the end, we also would like and at the end of our speech, we would also show and show our gratitude to Constanze Ecker and Sarah Bandera, who have been representing us as, co as course speakers in this academic year. Thank you very much for your efforts. Before I invite you to the reception that we prepared, please give a big round of applause to our string quartet of the Orchestra University of Vienna. Thank you. Uh, dear, dear masters, <laughs> you, you have the spirit, you have shown the spirit of the DA. That was great. You felt like a start-up company in the making. Continue. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah.